and and they and they've got such a strong bias toward their point of view that they're unwilling to accept the new idea and even stop and think about it for a bit. So I, I don't think it's limited to non-technologists. I think non-technologists would look and you would say, okay, well, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is digital money. What is money? You remember you guys sat through 20 hours of my lectures on what is money? Okay, <laughs> I'm going to tell you a secret. I didn't know what money was when Robert Breedlove asked me to go and do the podcast. He said, come on my show called What is Money? And I said, well, gosh, I guess I better think about what is money before I get on the show. And then I ended up writing out a 10 page outline and it becomes 30 hours of discussions. But but, you know, I got to the year 2020 without thinking about what is money. Most of the people in the world don't know what is money. So if you say it's digital money, that doesn't click. And then if you say uh, it's digital property, most people don't know what property is. They haven't thought about the definition of property or property rights. What is that really, right? Do you own your own stuff if you live in North Korea? Satoshi invented the ability to manifest energy in cyberspace, something conservative. Well, people that are computer scientists don't understand conservation of energy. That, you know, if I'm criticizing the computer science geeks, right? And this is not at MIT, they make you study physics and thermodynamics, right? And, and, and mechanical engineering as well as computer science. But if all you did was study computer science and you never studied physics and thermodynamics and mechanical and aeronautical engineering, then you're lulled into this false sense of security where you think you can just make any rule and do anything because there's no conservation of energy. The, the reason that uh, aeronautical engineering is a really good grounding to understand what money is or what crypto should be or what Bitcoin should be is aeronautical engineering is like the ultimate systems engineering discipline. You have to master computer science, computer engineering, mechanical engineering, uh, metallic, metal, metallurgy. You have to master chemical engineering, electronic, le electrical engineering, control systems. You have to master ocean engineering, fluid dynamics, uh, you know, propulsion. All of these things, and there were probably five out of a thousand that would have said it's worth a lot. And 99% of them would have said, are you out of your mind? It's worth nothing. And so I, I think that um, the, if you're looking for a big idea or the, the grand idea, it is that you really have to focus upon a small area. And then if you focus on something, spend thousands and thousands of hours, 10,000 hours focused on that thing. And if you have an open mind, maybe you can, maybe your opinion matters. And then uh, like, I'm not going to give you a, my opinions on the 99% of the stuff in the world that's really important because I haven't focused on it like asking me about vaccines and biomed and gene splicing and, you know, even the latest propulsion technology. I, I haven't spent thousands of hours thinking about rocket propulsion technology breakthroughs in the last decade. So I, I think that the lesson you learn is probably better to stay in your lane. But if you're going to invest money or your reputation or your or your life savings, you probably ought to really, really focus on that. And you shouldn't be cavalier or nonchalant because it's, it's really easy to make mistakes today. First, a framework, you know, like the, the iPhone was, it was not going anywhere until the, app, until the application store hit. <laughs> and they had the iOS as a programming language. If you look at the iPhone 1 and the iPhone 2, there's no cut and paste. There's no app store. It's kind of a, a dead thing. And then iPhone 3 hits, and now you've got an app store, and now you've got an explosion of thousands of applications, and it's its own ecosystem. And uh, the killer apps, you know, become WhatsApp, you know, Facebook, uh, uh, Instagram, right? And the world's never the same again. Go I mean, Google. But uh, if you look at Bitcoin, you know, think, think superconducting network, superconducting energy network, okay? I want to move... Uh, 
energy at the speed of light for fr friction free for free and i want to instantiate it forever like it, put it in a crucible so when i look at bitcoin miners that's what i see right i see uh i see the caches of a digital energy or caissons of a digital energy network right they um they have created uh the ability to digitize energy and so once i convert the energy by, you know, it, it could be electrical engineer and energy, but it could be political energy. I take a billion dollars of yen or I take a billion dollars of electricity. Either way, it pops up as Bitcoin and Robinhood supported withdrawal and deposit on the layer one. So they're kind of lower performance open. But um, I think that you're going to see you're going to see pretty much store of value applications that use the base layer. If you want to do cool transactional applications, like a billion transactions a day at the speed of light for free, you're not going to do it with layer one. You need, and if you want to be open, you do it with layer two. But if you want to be proprietary, well, heck, that's already happening, right? Binance and Coinbase and, and the like, even Cash App lets you send Bitcoin cash tag to cash tag in a proprietary way. I think that that was the status quo we're kind of at at the beginning of 2022. But uh, there's additional layers, right? That the next layer is going to be Bitcoin derivatives. Like MicroStrategy is a derivative of Bitcoin. Uh, GBTC is a derivative of Bitcoin. All the Bitcoin mining stocks are derivatives of Bitcoin. So you say, how do you get mass adoption? What if I sell you a car with a Bitcoin embedded in the car? Right. And and now the natural yield on the Bitcoin, if I put twenty thousand dollars of Bitcoin or, or let's say fifty thousand dollars of Bitcoin into a car that costs fifty thousand, maybe the car pays for its electricity and its maintenance forever. It's a it's a perpetual car. Right. Are now, you saying the energy you're saying basically by earning through the Bitcoin? Is that what you mean? Yeah, you know, like what I mean is. What if I actually sold you a watch or sold you a car that had money embedded in it? Let me give you a, a, another idea. I give you a watch. I put enough Bitcoin in it that the watch generates the equivalent of uh, $100,000 a year increasing with the Bitcoin economy. It's a perpetual watch that makes you rich forever. You just have to wear it. You understand what I'm saying? I like so that like, idea. Like if you're if you're <laughs> Sign not, me up, man. <laughs> now you're not create if you're not creative, you're like, okay, well, I need a how do I make a, a car run forever? Well, I have to put a battery in the car that holds enough energy to make the car run for a hundred years. Well, there is no such battery, right? Batteries lose two percent of their energy a month at best, right? So the energy loss in a battery is 24% a year. The half-life of energy in a battery is at best is three years, maybe one year, okay? What's the half-life of energy in Bitcoin? Well, it's forever, you see? So if I put the energy, if I take the electricity that I would use to run the car for 100 years and I put it in the car, I'm going to lose it because of uh, depletion. But, de de uh, depletion. but if I take the same energy, and I sell it to the grid, take the money, buy the Bitcoin, 